The Lord be with you. We find ourselves entering into Holy Week, which is the time and the days that we set aside to commemorate the last days of the life and earthly ministry of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, we still will not be able to gather together in person, uh, but our intention is to offer some spiritual resources for you to still have a focused and a holy conclusion to your Lenten season. So on our website, uh, we will offer on the homepage in the Guided Prayers and Meditations section, uh, the Stations of the Cross that you can open or download as a PDF uh, so that you can focus on the 14 events that lead from the Garden of Gethsemane to the burial of Jesus. We're also going to offer some videos this week to walk you through the various days of Holy Week, beginning with this video, which will focus on Monday and Tuesday of that week. Now, the lectionary focuses on one gospel during the Holy Seasons each year. And this year, the focus is from the Gospel of John. So all of our readings this week will come from the Gospel of John. Today, we will read uh, Monday and Tuesday's readings, both of which will come from John chapter 12. So our first reading is the first 11 verses in this chapter. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served, while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came, not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well. For on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and believing in him. Now this section of scripture takes us back six days before the Passover feast. And that's very intentional in John's gospel. John wants us to see the end of Jesus' life associated with the Passover. He specifically wants his hearers and his readers to think of Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So at this point, in these last six days, Jesus finds himself at the house of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And we found out in chapter 11 that uh, Jesus was good friends with this family. So much so that when Lazarus was sick, the message that was sent to Jesus was the one whom you love is sick. So these are people that Jesus was very close to. These events happened immediately after Lazarus had been raised from the dead. And there is a feast in honor of Jesus at the house. And we learn three identities, I think, in this section. Uh, the first is inhabited by Mary, who is someone who loves Jesus. She is so thankful and honored for what Jesus has done for her brother that she takes this perfume 
this very expensive perfume that was supposed to be saved for kind of a once-in-a-lifetime event, and she uses it to anoint Jesus' feet. And Jesus declares that this is in preparation for his burial, which is profound because what we learn after the crucifixion of Jesus is the women did not have time to anoint the body for burial. So this is a prophetic act that is done, and this is the way Jesus interprets it. And I think it reminds us that when we are devoted to Jesus, when we do something out of love and honor for him, sometimes we have no idea what kind of effect it's going to have or how God can use that for prophetic purposes. We just do it out of devotion, and God uses it as he will. The second identity is inhabited by Judas Iscariot, the one who would betray Jesus. And he is identified in this passage as a thief. And what we realize is when we are people who focus only on ourselves and our own wants and our own desires, we then close ourselves off to the will of God. And I think that is a good reminder and a good wake-up call for us as we enter into this most holy week. And the final identity is inhabited by Jesus. And Jesus makes this comment, You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. And I think that draws our attention to the fact that we need to put Jesus first in all things. There are so many other distractions in life, so many other things that can demand our time and our allegiance but Jesus is for a very limited time, and this life is very limited, and this season is drawing to a close. We need to put Jesus first and focus on him. This episode concludes with the fact that uh, many people have come to see not only Jesus, but also Lazarus, and this forces the hand of the Pharisees to plot and devise a plan to kill Jesus and to kill Lazarus as well. So what should have been the greatest miracle for Jesus in the Gospel of John, raising a man who had been dead for four days, instead becomes the very catalyst to bring about his death. And that is the way Holy Week presents these paradoxes to us. Our readings then for Tuesday come later in this chapter beginning in verse 20 and carrying on through verse 36. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servants also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, This voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out, and I when I am lifted up, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. 
The crowd spoke up. We have heard from the law that the Messiah will remain forever. So how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Then Jesus told them, You are going to have the light just a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, before darkness overtakes you. Whoever walks in the dark does not know where they are going. Believe in the light while you have the light, so that you may become children of light. When he had finished speaking, Jesus left and hid himself from them. The first thing that we see in this passage is that some Greeks come seeking Jesus. They want to see Jesus. They want to hear from Jesus. Their hearts are ready, perhaps, to begin believing in Jesus. And as soon as Jesus hears this, he knows that his hour has come. The message about him and the truth about him is extended beyond the boundaries of his own people, the people of Israel. And now the Gentiles, the people of the other nations, are beginning to be drawn to him. So he knows this is the conclusion of his ministry. And in the midst of this, he he declares this very telling statement about what he believes the end of his life is going to mean. He says, if you have a single seed, just a kernel of wheat, and it isn't planted, uh, its benefit is only for itself. It stays just a single seed. But if you plant that seed, it grows up into a stalk, and at the end of that stalk comes many more seeds. And that is how he sees the benefit of his crucifixion, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. It will not just benefit him, but it will open the gates to eternal life to many, many others. This is the path that Jesus has chosen. And even though he recognizes that he is troubled in spirit, he calls on the Father to glorify his name. And this is the next thing that stands out to us in this passage, that a voice from heaven speaks back to Jesus and says, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. We are used to a voice speaking to Jesus from heaven in the Synoptic Gospels on two occasions. Uh, the first is at Jesus' baptism, and the second is on the Mount of Transfiguration. But John's Gospel doesn't tell either one of those stories. Instead, it introduces us to Jesus at the very beginning as the Word of God. Uh, Jesus is that word that was spoken, that word that created in the beginning. And God took that same creative word and wrapped it in flesh and sent it to dwell among us. That's who Jesus is. Jesus is the word of God. Now the voice of God appears for the first time in this passage, confirming that God has glorified himself by his acts in the past. And God will now glorify himself again in what he is about to do with the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And in the final section, we learn the confusion that this causes. And this causes us great confusion as well. No matter how many times we do Holy Week, no matter how many times we focus on the cross of Christ, there is still a mystery to it, a mystery that seems impenetrable to us. But Jesus boils it down and makes it simple for us by saying, Believe in the light while you have the light, so that you may become children of light. And that is the hope for us. In this season of Lent, may you draw closer to the cross. And as you walk closer to that hill of Golgotha, where Jesus was crucified, May you find that Jesus also draws closer to you. And in our times of isolation, may the peace of God be with you. Amen.